Hey guys, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper, and I'm shooting a video to really bring home what my uh, comms initiative is. So, bear with me a few moments, and I'll read you what I got. This is an initiative that I'm borrowing from another group. This comes from Amron, the American Radio, I'm sorry, the American Readout Radio Operators Network. This could be a great tool in our prepping toolkit. I propose uh, to have a net regularly in your area. A net is a regularly scheduled communications network and it's a great way to practice with your equipment and become proficient with it. And it's a great way to make contact with like-minded preppers in your area. The reasoning behind the initiative is to get more people using their communications equipment that they have on hand <clears throat> okay communication during an SHTS situation is paramount you'll need to know what's happening where it's happening and who's involved if you only have a CB radio great not a problem <clears throat> in fact with this initiative you would transmit on channel 3 and any ham radio operator within the listening area would also be monitoring channel 3 on their CB and they'll be able to pass that information on along ham radio frequencies so there's that uh, it's true CB is only a uh, short distance uh, but with the proper antenna height and the proper equipment you can receive and transmit signals just fine. <coughs> just fine. <coughs> Ham radio can be used for longer range communications, obviously. And Ham Ops, as I said, should have a CB unit to monitor channel 3 on, on their CB unit. That way, again, they can relay information from CB to the Ham bands in case, you know, people outside the affected area need information. All right, ham radio is licensed here in the U.S. by the FCC. And before you say, but in a shit hits a fan situation, licenses aren't going to matter. And you're right. You're absolutely right. However, would you... Look, think about this. In a, an SHTF situation, you find a firearm... Okay, do you think you could pick that gun up and be proficient with it without ever having practice with it? No, you probably wouldn't. Same goes with ham radio. These things are not plug and play. You can't just turn it on and start jibber jabbering because nobody's going to hear you, especially if you don't have the correct frequencies. Okay. Getting that knowledge comes with practice. And getting your license is the best way to get that practice. And before I start hearing I don't want to be on a government list, let me drop a knowledge bomb on you. If you, one, own a home, two, own a vehicle of any kind, or three, have a social security number, you're on a list. It's that simple. You're already on the list, so... Please, don't give me that, okay? Uh, you get your license on ham radio. You're able to practice legally with other hams in your area, okay? You do that, you become proficient with your equipment. That way, when an SHTF situation happens, You'll know what to do. You won't be holding your walkie-talkie. Oh, what do I do? How do I turn it on? You'll know. Okay. Getting a license means that you have taken the time to learn how to use this equipment. Okay. It's also a way to show others that, hey, I know what I'm talking about. You may not. So, at least open up. Open your mind to that. Um, 
I've been a ham radio operator since 2009. I have talked all over the world on my equipment. I kind of know what I'm talking about. Okay? I'm not trying to blow my own horn. I'm not trying to be Billy Badass. I know what I'm talking about. Okay? Ham radio is a way to stay in the loop before, during, and after an SHTF situation. When Mother Nature throws storms your way, cell towers are going to be down. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If they're not down, they're going to be overloaded with people trying to call out of the area because their, their families outside the affected areas are panicking, oh my god, what's happening, what's going on? Too many people overloading the cell tower? No bueno. Okay? Ham radio allows people to communicate with areas outside of an affected area. Okay? And, yeah, it's, it's really a great thing to have in your tool belt. Ham radio does have some requirements, like taking, like needing a license. And to get the license, you have to take a 35, 35 question multiple choice uh, test. And if you know nothing about electronics or electronic theory, don't worry. I didn't. I'm just fine. Okay. There are places that you can take your practice test. That's the ARRL website or QRZ.com. You can take these practice tests for free as often as you want until you consistently score at least 80% or better. The next step would, find, would be to find a local ham club as they generally offer technician class license, technicians test at least once a month here in the US. For my Canadian friends, I'm not sure, but I will be pulling some information for that. If you have information you want to give to me that way, great, I will post it. The cost for the test, at least here in the US, is currently $15. That's going to increase in the very near future. Uh, if you're going to take your test, which I strongly encourage you to do, do it now. Okay. Even when the increase happens, it's only increasing to $35, which breaks down to $3.50 a day, or a month, sorry. <clears throat> and in a hobby where Equipment could, can cost thousands of dollars. $35 per 10 years is not bad. You may have noticed that I put air quotes around the word hobby. That's because some people see what we do as only a hobby. We get on the radio, we talk to each other for a couple minutes, and that's it. Or we get on the radio and we talk to people or talk to each other about our ailments. And, you know, that does happen. Um, but let me point out that during Hur Hurricane Katrina, ham operators were outside of, uh, Louisiana, outside of New Orleans, and they were passing along health and wellness information outside the affected area, which is something that we do. When Hurricanes Irma and Maria blasted Puerto Rico, yeah, remember that? All the communication was down. Ham operators went down to Puerto Rico on their own dime and set up communications for the entire island. And we did this without getting paid. Well, why would you do that? Well, that's because what we are that's what we are. We assist when there's no other forms of communication. You may have heard me say it before. When all else fails, ham radio is there. Now, with this initiative, again, if you have a CB or a ham radio or both, monitor channel 3 in your area, monitor your chosen frequency on ham radio, get whatever information from CB to ham radio, get it out, disseminate that information. That is the idea behind this initiative. Okay? 
I've prattled on about 10 minutes now. So, I'm going to sign off here. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper. I'll be back next time with the types of equipment you'll need. Carry on. Mm -hmm.